Journey to Iron Man, Florida, episode 13. And as I record this, it's just five days out from Iron Man, Florida, on November the 5th, 2022, in Panama City Beach, Florida. Uh, as you can see from this long series that I've recorded, I have been training and preparing for this race uh, for the last 13 weeks specifically, but really over these past few years. And as I build toward the final days before the race, I am feeling great about it. I feel really confident in my preparations. I feel as well prepared as I could feel uh, without having actually ever done one of these races before. And that was really what I wanted to accomplish. I wanted, if I was going to do an Ironman race, I wanted to make sure that I was well prepared for it. Because I remember my first ever triathlon, which was in 2019, um, I was way underprepared for it. I only trained 24 days for it. I wasn't comfortable with any of the disciplines. I didn't think I'd be able to make it to, to the finish line. Um, and I you know, never wanted to repeat that experience again. So what I told myself is any race I line up for, I want to feel well prepared for. And I feel well prepared for Ironman Florida. I don't have any anxiety about the distance of the race. Um, I've been doing long endurance races now for a few years. I've done many multi-hour you know, multi events um, and you know many multi-hour training sessions. I understand what I'm capable of. I understand how to pace myself. Um, you know the importance of nutrition and, and hydration, right? And just staying present in the moment, and you know, you know, managing my output so it, it stays at a you know consistent, steady output that I'm able to to maintain for hours and hours and hours on end. I have complete and total faith in in my ability to do that and to you know deal with problems as they come up on race day, which they no doubt will. Problems always happen during races, and a big part of racing in long races is being able to problem solve on the fly and adapting as necessary. So I am ready to go. I, like I said, I don't feel any anxiety about this. I have a lot of excitement for it. Um, obviously, in a race like this, you know, you, you need a bit of good fortune to get to the finish line, and I, I pray that I will have that that good fortune. But you know, if I do, um, you know, I'm really expecting to have a great performance in in this race, uh, based upon the way I feel about it, and based upon the way that I have prepared for it. Right? It hasn't just been this 13 weeks of preparation for me. Um, this 13 weeks is part of a longer, what's going to be a total 38 week triathlon season this year. And then that fits into my overall, these last three years where, you know, I've spent, I've spent training for middle and long distance triathlon. Uh, you know, I'm over a, a thousand hours now over these three years of swim, bike and run. So I'm very comfortable with it. And, you know, a, a longer race, really is just scaling my effort appropriately, making sure I have a good plan, nailing the hydration, nailing the nutrition, and then just, you know, keep going uh, until the end of the race, right? Keep going till, till you get to the finish line. Um, you know, I, I set some, some time goals for this back at the start of my, you know, commitment to training for this because I wanted to hold myself accountable. And if I wanted to do this, I wanted to do it right. And I wanted to reach certain standards. But as we approach the race, I don't really have any of that in the forefront of my mind. Um, I would prefer and during most of my races, I don't even look and, and check times or anything like that. Um, I like it better that way. Usually I just keep heart rate up on my watch. Uh, for this race, I'm going to need to be somewhat focused on time just because of the importance of fueling regularly and staying hydrated. So uh, I'm probably going to maintain some awareness of what my time is like throughout the day, which is okay. I am not going to put any pressure on myself in terms of the time. It takes me however long it takes me. Um, because all I can do in that moment is manage my effort level and worry about you know the next stroke in the water, the next pedal stroke on the bike, the next few strides that that stride I'm doing on the run, right? Like that's all I can control in the moment. And you know, understanding that maybe I'm not feeling my best at one particular moment, but that doesn't mean that I'm not going to be feeling better 
at a later point in the race, right? You know, energy and emotional states during an event like this, they, they ebb and they flow. So, you know, just, you know, stay present in the moment. And if I'm suffering, understanding that any suffering I'm dealing with, it will pass. It always does. And, uh, you know, staying optimistic and just keep going, right? Don't quit and just get into that finish line. And that is what is on my mind right now. Uh, last week of training was, you know, the start of my taper. Um, I was really committed for those 12 weeks of, of race build. I was doing two sessions most days. Um, you know, I, I put in an average of over 15 hours of training every week. It was really demanding on me. Physically, but also really mentally, um, you know, all that training took away a lot of my energy, you know, in terms of for, for other areas of my life. Uh, I didn't find it's a healthy and sustainable way to, to live my life um, in any way. You know, something I could do for a short period of time, and I found it to be very re rewarding. But uh, once I hit my final session uh, the Sunday before last... And I finished that. I, I, I did switch off mentally a little bit because I had to really push myself just to get to the end of that training block. And then once I got to the taper period, I understood, right, now I can take it a little bit easier. I don't have to be as focused, as dialed in. If I'm not feeling great during a workout, I can dial it back, right? Less is more during this time sometimes. So I switched off mentally a little bit. Um, my, my volume, my intensity of training was significantly reduced, although I still put in close to, to 10 hours last week. Um, so, you know, I, I definitely got out there and, uh, you know, swam, biked and, and ran quite a bit, but a lot less than I had been doing. So, you know, it's allowed me to shake off some of the fatigue I've been carrying. And, uh, you know, my... My the, the way I felt has 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 shifted a bit throughout you know the, these last eight days or so since I, I finished with my training block. That's normal. That's to be expected. Um, the way I'm feeling today, or the way I'm feeling last week, or even the way I'm feeling the day before the race, that doesn't have much impact on how I'm going to be feeling once the race starts. Once I'm out on the race course, I trust that my body and mind, right, they know what this circumstance is they know when the race is happening and that you know I will be prepared when I line up on the beach the morning of November the 5th my body and mind will be prepared to take on that challenge um, so I have full faith in that and uh, you know these next few days are going to be getting some some more training in right some some last minute sessions um, you know, keeping the sword sharp, uh, making sure that everything is ready to go for race day. We, we got to travel, um, you know, making sure I got, I got everything packed that I need. I have all the, the nutrition that I need to support, you know, the, the days before the race and then during the race. I have, have everything that, that I'll need during the race. So that's going to be a big focus over these next couple days, making sure I'm ready to go and well prepared because when triathlon preparation is the key to success, you got to make sure you you are prepared for the challenge at hand, especially for a race like this. So last week, it was an easy recovery ride on Monday after another busy week of training to end week 12. Uh, I got in a solid strength training session, which felt pretty good. That'll be my last really solid strength training session on this training cycle. Uh, Tuesday, I did a brick session. It was uh, supposed to be a short ride with some max effort intervals, you know, a, a intense but not deep effort. Uh, I didn't really have it in me, you know, and I was on the bike and, and I started doing it and uh, I just really wasn't feeling it. I could have pushed through it. If it was earlier in the training cycle, I probably would have pushed through it, but I had some, some, some good sense and judgment and I said, you know what, there really is no sense in me really pushing myself super hard right now. So I adapted, I made the ride easier. I rode about an hour and then I did a 3.2 mile run off the bike. On uh, Wednesday, I went down to the ocean. I got another session in in my wetsuit. It went really well. I felt great in the wetsuit. Uh, I felt really strong in the water. I did a 40-minute straight set, and, you know, it felt pretty easy, which is good because I'm going to have to be swimming for a, a lot longer than that in the ocean come, come race day. Um, but, you know, it, it was overall a, a really good training session. I'm able to just swim and swim and swim now. And this is what, you know, this is what swimming over 10,000 meters every week for for you know you know 12 weeks gets me um, so I feel really comfortable in the water so that was a good session I did 55 minutes on the bike in the afternoon again nothing crazy Thursday kind of similar I did a 50 minute recovery oriented bike session you know nothing crazy no crazy intensity in that 
Uh, Friday, I did a longer brick workout. I kind of messed up the, the tracking of it on my Garmin, but I spent about two and a half hours on the bike. It was 45 miles on Zwift. Again, nothing crazy. You know, some intervals, a little bit of a strong effort, uh, some, some time at race pace, getting used to that, getting comfortable to that. But, um, you know, 45 easy miles at this point, and then a uh, 2.8 mile run off the bike after that with a little bit of intensity, you know, just staying used to the running off the bike. Uh, Saturday, I did a swim at the pool uh, in the morning, 2,450 yards. Uh, I, I treated it a bit different than I had been treating my early morning swims on the weekends where I had been trying to just, you know, get to the pool really early because usually I have a second session after that and I don't want to have to wait for the pool or anything. Uh, but this time I opted to go a little later to get some extra sleep in, right? Get some extra rest in. And uh, I, I felt good about that. The uh, swim went pretty well. Uh, I, I came back, I refueled, I relaxed a bit. I hit a run in the afternoon. I was looking to go for about 60 to 90 minutes with some work at and above race pace, but I got out there and it was a really hot day here. It's, it's warmed up again in South Florida. So the temperature was in the upper 80s with the heat index in the 90s. Um, I was I was laboring, you know, you know, during that run. And again, I could have pushed through it, but I didn't see any value in that. And I didn't see any value and just being out in the heat suffering for another half hour or another hour and, and you know, running with more intensity and getting my, my heart rate, you know, even higher. Uh, so I decided to take it nice and easy and cut the run short after three miles. I did half an hour or so. I felt good about that. And then on Sunday, I did a recovery-oriented bike session. I, I was outside on the bike, you know, making some, some final preparations, getting used to, to riding the bike more. Um, I've trained a lot on the indoor training trainer um, during this training cycle for, for a variety of reasons. Ideally, I would have gotten out on the bike more, but I've ridden the bike a lot in the past. I'm comfortable on the bike. Um, you know, so I, I feel good about that. I, I wish I would have gotten some more reps in outside, but it, it is what it is. Um, I've avoided any serious bike issues by, by staying inside a lot, you know, and, and, you know, certainly last year when I had a bike crash about a month before my, my, uh, a race of the year, you know, that, that, that certainly didn't help. So, um, staying indoors has helped me avoid that. Uh, but at the end of the day, you got to be able to ride the bike and, you know, the, the race doesn't happen on the indoor trainer and riding the bike is different. So, you know, Try to stay comfortable with that. Maybe I'll get out on the bike again once I get down to, to Panama City Beach and, you know, just get a, a little bit more time, comfort on the bike. But I'm feeling pretty good about it. Uh, the, the course in Ironman, Florida is not a very technical course. Uh, it's long. It's pretty flat. There are a few hills. I think there's like 1,700 feet of elevation over the 112 miles. So it's not totally flat. But uh, nothing you would consider to be too technical, you know, not a lot of uh, crazy turns or anything like that. So uh, I'll, I'll be ready to go on the bike and, you know, have to spend a lot of time in aero position. That'll really be the key, you know, and just kind of learning, you know, figuring out how to break up that bike ride. And, you know, it's going to be a long time in the saddle on a, on a pretty straight, flat, but I'm going to anticipate it's going to be a pretty boring course. So, uh, you know, getting ready, getting used to that. And, uh, you know, here we are. Uh, today is the uh, final week for my preparations. I'm going to do a brick session in a little bit. Short, a little bit of intensity. Nice little run off the bike. Hopefully feeling good. And, uh, you know, a couple more short workouts to go before I hit the road and travel up to Panama City Beach to take on Ironman Florida.